after the after the military, I went police department, and then police department. I, I got on a small team, um, and I was loving it. And then you know George Floyd happened, and we all knew that was going to be bad. Mm-hmm. I, I'll never forget sitting in the team room. It was a six six man team, uh, two females, and we were uh, citywide impact. So our it was the just formed in Denver is the first citywide impact team. And our job was to go anywhere the crime was going to be. And it was amazing. We just got the promotion. It was huge because I wasn't even eligible for it yet. So it was like this big promotion and I, I, it was incredible. And we were sitting in the, the team room and uh, one of my teammates, uh, he goes, did you see? And I was like, no. And they, they show us the George Floyd thing. And we all looked at each other and we're like, Oh man. Fuck. Man. So we knew, we didn't know how bad it was going to get, but we knew we were all going to feel that, that mm-hmm. one officer was going to make us all feel the pain mm-hmm. of his decisions. Um, and then the riots broke out. So because we were a citywide impact team and we were a small team, we went all over and it, the riots were just insane. The riots were nuts. It was like my whole team dispersed. Mm. Um, and it was like I was just by myself. So like everyone's just by themselves. We're jumping on with other cops that we don't know. We're completely mixed. Like we're getting Molotov cocktails thrown at us. We're getting rocks. Uh, we'd be in the streets and my, like, I saw an officer take a boulder to the leg and he's collapsed mm. over, um, you know, almost killed like multiple times. Almost got hit standing on the side of a um, RDV. It was a rapid deployment vehicle. It's a truck you stand on and people were trying to hit us with their cars. Uh, wow. So at one point I got pinned in between the the truck and a car. So, but that felt like home, right? It felt like the, the chaos of um, mm. the riots was like kind of like war. But then what happened that was really bad was after the fact that the department started not having our backs as mm. police officers. So they started not supporting us. And um, then we felt targeted. Mm. So then my, my PTSD like started going through the roof. I was having panic attacks driving into work. And uh, that's when I was like, I need to go. I need to go. I can't do this. And I was like, I'm not about this. Like, I don't like, I don't like going to work every day and feeling because I have a half, my, my sister is a half sister and she's half black. Mm-hmm. And so I like, I've seen her, I've seen racism towards her as a kid. Mm-hmm. And at the time I thought it was because she's an, she's a little sister. She's mm-hmm. annoying. That's why yeah. people treat her different. Cause she's a little annoying sister. Like, oh. like I can't stand her either. She's right. always up my business, you know? <laughs> and it, it wasn't until years later that I, th- I realized that she was, it was racism. And I'm mm-hmm. like, Oh my God, like members of my own family treating her different. And it's like, Oh shit. So then for me to like go into Get stuck. Sean, I, don't, can, I want I don't I want you to know that I'm not Sean, racist. go back, go back, go Sorry, back. Sorry, go back. The, our, our internet kind of went out for just a second. Okay. The you you were just talking about you wanted sister. her to know, or yeah. you wanted. I, I just wanted I wanted the community like to know like it, it feels weird as a cop as a white person after George Floyd and you're still trying to go out and do your job and you're like you're they're sending you to these gang neighborhoods. Yeah. And it's like all it's a black community right. and it's like uh, in in the certain parts of Denver. You got Trey Trey Crips and you know, it's, it's a, it's all black gangs. Mm. So now you're pulling over people in the black community and you could say what you're trying to do all day long. You could be like, yeah, I'm trying to find guns and dope. Mm. But at the end of the day, all that people see is a white guy pulling over a black that's guy. Right. And yep. that's not good in this environment. Mm. And that, that looks like I'm just some racist white cop. And I, I fit the, like I have, I was shaving. So I don't have, couldn't have my beard. Mm. So I'm just like this, like, you know, I'm <laughs> Mr. White Cop. Ed. I grew up. I grew up in a middle class right. neighborhood, and I and I'm gonna give you a ticket. Yeah, so right. people don't know that like I didn't grow up that way, but right. they're not gonna ask me. You know, mm-hmm. even my partner, my partner was it was uh, black during the riots, and they're calling him Uncle Tom and yeah. race trader, yeah. and they're dude, they're throwing stuff at him, and like we get in the car after that, and I see him, and he just it hurts him, yeah. man. Like he joined the police department to represent the black community, mm-hmm. to make change. You know, he joined to, to be the change and to show that, Hey, you're not going to treat my people the way I don't think is okay. Right. It's not going to happen. And I'm going to make sure of it. And now he's being called an uncle Tom and a yeah. race trader. Yeah. And I was like, dude. And so yeah. I couldn't do it anymore. My, my PTSD was, I was, it was going through the roof and I was like, I'm not playing this game anymore.